comics are awesome. Oh, hi. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm, I want to say Hell Dude, which is, I think is what you're going for in the name. <laughs> I'm going to have to change the intro because it's a, it's a bit long and it's a little non-specific, but it's just, it was meant to be a catch-all for a bunch of things. So, uh, thank you for getting up early. I hope it wasn't early uh, on purpose. I hope you just couldn't sleep or something. Or your cat woke you up because it was eating your face like mine does. Um, yeah, I got a lot of inking to do. Um, I should probably just show it, but uh, I've had to make sure I got pens with enough ink in. Uh, I've had to uh, think about the line weights I'm going to use. Why don't I just show it and explain? I'm drawing, inking probably, uh, probably just inking for this stream, uh, Spider Jerusalem as a commission for one of my uh, Kofi, Kofi, frickin' website commissions. I'm gonna say Kofi. No, I'm gonna say Kofi. If I say Kofi, it sounds like the guy from the UN. The old guy, Kofi Annan. This is what I got. I'm gonna bring the camera in. Hello, HJ. Yeah, it is a bit long. <laughs> it's also got a copyright strike against it, so uh, this looks like some sort of sexual device. It's not. It's just that I need to actually properly hook it up. But hey, it works. Actually, I can zoom in. I'll zoom in. No, zoom in. I'll put that up there. Put that there. Why don't you want to turn? Turn your bastard. That's a little better. There we go. I mean, I can zoom in on it. Actually, it's already zoomed in. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's meant to be coffee. Kofi. Coffee. Kofi. It's like, I guess coffee.com was obviously taken. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting website. Uh, and I haven't even put anything up there yet. So I, I will soon. But I wanted to let you guys see the stream first before I put it up publicly. Um, this is Spider Jerusalem. This is not bad. Actually, uh, I took some time on his crotch. His crotch is very important. In all my work, crotches. Uh, I'm a crotch guy. Uh, I'm not going to show you my crotch right now. But uh, and the, the, the legs and the shoes. I don't normally draw feet, but I pulled my ass out and drew feet for this one. So... I like Spider. I was trying to think how many times I've drawn him before, and I actually haven't drawn him too many times. I don't. People don't ask me much. Um, a couple times, and then I've drawn him a couple times for me. Despite the fact I've worked with Warren, people don't want to see my Spider because Derek Robertson does the best Spider, obviously, followed by closely by Jeff Darrow. Um, he was amazing, as well. Um, so I have, this is like a, a thicker line, slightly thinner line, which I'm running out of. Very thin line, chunky shit. I just call this my chunker. Um, Cause he's got a lot of fine line stuff up here. But this stuff is, I'm gonna do a bunch of shading on this stuff before I go to the paint stage. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of thick and thin, thick to thin as they say. Some people, I don't think they're official terms. I think people just make up what, what works. Thick and thin, thick, thick as thin, thick and thick thin, the thick. Um, thank you for joining me though. This is more impromptu. I know this isn't at the Sunday 11 a.m. time. This is more when I'm awake. Although I had some coffee earlier to make sure I was. Um, and my audio is okay. I made sure the microphone's fucking on this time. And if you're watching this later on, thank you for joining me. Oh, oh, I was going to show something first. Because I can do that. I can show... Uh, where is it? My default horrible screen. I rebooted and uh, my, des my desktop fancy thing went away. Oh, I can zoom it in. 
That is a, a very old spider I did. I was trying to find all the spiders I did. So I did that one. I did that one. That was definitely a con. That was a New York Comic Con. It, it kind of says it up there. And my favorite one, before I was ever published, I actually did put some work in. Uh, it was back when I was like more on a Dave McKean kick and I was really trying to do some weird shit. I did all this weird stuff around it. And uh, Heavy Metal actually promoted this one when they were like using my name for a, the fact I had a book coming with them called Fish Kill, which is out now and you can buy on their website too, by the way. I don't know why they use this. This was before I was ever even published. <laughs> Better than the last one. Thank you, Hell Dude. Uh, I spelt Bowel Disruptor wrong though. It is a bowl disruptor. But in fairness to me, I was very young. And I was, it was probably very late at night and I probably left that, I did, I always leave that stuff right to the end. So I might like the art, but uh, I don't like my spelling it late, late at night. So that's what I did for that. Um, that's what I got to beat. I got to do something half decent with this. So I'm sorry the lighting sucks. I'm going to invest in some better lighting for this area. That third one at least seems your style. Yeah, that, and that was one of my first ones. Well, the, the first one. Um, probably just before I started Hellspawn. I play around with style. Um, well, th those other two definitely were my style. Those are my style when I've had little sleep. Uh, it's been a long day and I'm drawing under pressure. And that's when I really change my style a bit, I think, and, and uh, find efficiencies and find my voice a little more. But um, doing them in the studio, you're in a different mindset. It's a different ball game. For better or worse, sometimes worse. But you can repair your mistakes much easier uh, in a studio. So I'm probably first, I'm going to uh, start inking the, the fine line stuff. And then I'll go over it a bit more. This is on grey tinted paper. So it's not that the light sucks that much. It's just that it's on tinted paper already. I'm going to do that because I'm going to highlight a bunch of shit in this. How are you all doing, by the way? I hope you're doing well. I have been extremely busy. Uh, I would have started streaming earlier, but I had to have dinner and uh, the cooking of that was a little later than intended. And also I was doing wax sealed envelopes for some orders which needed to go out, but were waiting on me to get prints in for the Patreon store. Which... Uh, had some Wormwood number ones to go out. And Wormwood book two is almost, almost here, thank you to UPS, who seem quite slower than the USPS, the actual American Post Office service. But that's how they sent them, and I didn't have a choice in that, so. I'm also due to get uh, some book samples in very soon which I will definitely be showing on the next Patreon update. So I'm just inking the arm. It, like, the fine line's obviously good for the, for the details, but it's also, it's also good, like, cause I'm gonna paint this, so I don't want the lines to dominate. That's my theory. So I want uh, where he's got tattoos to be real black, so that they really like come out besides any of the painting I do. I hope you're all surviving the pandemic well enough. Are you both in France? You can't both be in France. Are you both in? No. I know hell dude is. I appreciate that. Vive la France. I hope I said it right. Um, I know it's late night for some and very early morning for others. And it's just normal evening for people on the west coast of America, like me. Which is kind of the worst time zone to do for anyone else, because I've already missed everything else. I am not a morning person, so... Getting up super early to do streams that are at convenient times for other people is gonna, gonna be tough. At 11am, 11am. Oh, I fucked up that bit there. I will have to deal with that later. Ignore that line. Ignore that. 
if you can see it on the camera. Camera moves a bit. I, I need to put it on a separate thing. One day I'll actually set up like I'm competent. I'm very aware. I'm learning as I'm going. But I'm trying, goddammit. Uh -huh. Takes me a while to build up to my rambles and, and of just saying crap. Morning people, I mean, yes, morning people are not to be trusted. Uh, I'm going to call you Jester, because J.H. Jester is going to mess with my head in my, uh, how do I say the name constantly? If that's okay with you, H.J. Jester. J.H. You see, you see. Jester. Uh, I don't trust morning people. I've never been a morning person. I think it's a world glo a global conspiracy against normal people because there's not many people that enjoy getting up at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. If you are, fair enough, good for you. But uh, I'm a night owl, so I demand things stay open until 2 a.m., but they don't. I used to work in an office uh, for IDW, and they kept office hours but I was doing regular comic work and that sucked and it especially sucked because sometimes I would stay late and make sure my deadlines were done back when I used to do that and uh like and I'd work over the whole weekend and I'd make sure whatever they needed done or what they wanted me to do got done and then they still kind of expected me to turn up at 9 a.m on a Monday after I just worked my complete ass off through the weekend, late night, to make sure stuff was done. I wasn't allowed to sleep in. I mean, I did a little bit, but I kind of got in trouble for it. It's like, office culture does not really suit everyone. I don't think it suits most people in offices in general. Who makes the rules? I mean, if it's for accountability, fair enough, but a lot of people working from home now, and they can be accountable anyway. I got the ear and the thing. I had a lot of trouble with this guy's head. Trying to get it equally proportioned and not some sort of weird slant. You guys read Transmit? Xavier is good for me too. JH is initials. I, I guess that. I'm used to call, calling people their real names, but then you'll see me at a con, you'll say your real name, and you won't say, oh, I was this guy on the internet with this other name, and I would have no clue that I'd been talking to you for the last, like, year or two, which happens a lot at cons. So people need to, like, go, no, 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 I'm this guy. I can call you J.H. instead of Jester. J.H. Jester. I'm going to remember it, I promise. Xavier is good for you. Are you Xavier? Hell dude, are you Xavier? Okay, I know who you are. Merci beaucoup. I hope I said that right for the right time of day. If there is a right time of day for that. I don't really speak French, I'm sorry. Every After every trip I've made to France, I usually pick up a word and then gradually forget everything I've ever learned. There's bon I know that you guys have different uh, evening and morning terms. Bonjour, bonsoir. I was once told I have a, a decent English accent for uh, French back when I was actually trying. But I'm not trying right now. I, I apologize. It's a very beautiful language. You met me in album... Oh, that was awesome. Back in the day. I hope album is uh, still going to be there. Or still there now. Jesus. Album was great. For the for anyone that doesn't know, album is a, a big um, English in, kind of English language uh, English market comic book store in France. It's not the uh, it's not the regular one that uh, everyone uses there for the regular French comics. Although I'm sure they have them. You tell me. It's all right. That's all right. 
It's the only place I've ever done. Uh, no, it's not the only place. I've signed somewhere else in France. I've signed in a few places in France at um, actual Bondicini, Bondicini, Bondicini shops. I apologize for my pronunciation. I've been everywhere in France except the south, so I've only been to half of France. But I can't wait to go back there, really. France is cool. You guys have good food, good fashion sense. You people actually wear clothes. You understand art. Uh, and you treat treat me amazingly. I was actually there with George Romero one time for... Uh... You guys respect comic artists so much that you invited... Um... You always seem to invite... There was a, movie, a horror movie festival. And you always seem to invite, I was told, a comic book artist. Or comic book person, I would I'd guess. Uh, to be a judge and one year I got the invite so I got to judge movies with uh, George Romero which was probably one of the highlights of my life uh, very unexpected sitting around drinking wine with 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 George was really cool so I got to meet him and his wife get to know him a little bit and watch some really good movies and uh, the movie that won, I still keep in touch with the director. He's awesome. His name's Lucky Lucky McKee. He did a movie called The Woman, which I highly recommend. It's a messed up film. And he's got a... I think his latest film's called The Kindred. So, Lucky, I am promoting you. His name's Lucky. He's American. So, that's a very American name. To me, as a dirty foreigner. Occasionally you may hear me make weird noises. You know, I think I can put this on a time lapse later too. I can do the whole live stream thing and then I can do a... A time lapse for people that don't want to watch something for five hours. Though I think I'll only be inking this thing tonight, so it'll probably only take like an hour and a half. And uh, Red Wolf, convenient time for Sydney, good. Well, I had to get some some Aussie time zone stuff in too. Hopefully I end up doing these like all times. But I can't do them too late at night because uh, other people may want to be sleeping. And apparently I'm loud when I talk, so I'm, gonna, I'm trying to be quieter. But I hope the microphone still picks it all up. I'm going to put this down. I'll, no, I won't go anymore. I organized my whole desk and now the, the monitor can't move anymore. I failed. I have failed. One day I'll get an actual professional setup. I drew you a... Ah, oh, I drew you a spawn at... Uh, yeah, so in France they have this... Um, they have a custom where when you get a book, you get a sketch in it generally, is what I was told. Which was fine. It was cool. Uh, I can do quick sketches. Um, a lot of people expected much more involved sketches for a while. In the first few times I was there. But people were also asking me to draw things like Captain America in a, in a hardcover of Fell. Which got a little weird. Got a little weird. But I like doing memento. I mean, I do free sketches at American cons too. But they're usually... My rule is usually, if it's free, dealer's choice. If it's for money, I draw whatever you want. Uh, as long as it's not going to get me arrested. So normally I stick to Skulls, Batman. Um, I could do Spawn. Spawn's pretty easy to do a nice quickie. But I bend the rules. But if you're doing free, free uh, sketches at, com at uh, cons all day... Um, it's more like it's about the brain drain if you if you're going to be doing requests all the time, because you actually burn a lot of a lot of energy in your brain when you're doing hardcore uh, intense concentration. So there's a reason why a lot of people feel completely knackered at the end of a a day at a con, and they just want to stare at a wall and be numb. I know you, Red Wolf. I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, your your name is Jody. 
So hello, Jody and Hail Squid. Thank you for checking in. I'm not even looking at the comments on uh, YouTube. I'm looking at them on my own fancy program, which is not one that most people use apparently, because I'm using this thing called Ecamm, Ecamm Live, which makes me sound like I should be uh, taking my clothes off or something for web for uh, sex cam stuff, but but it works on Mac and it it's got a really nice interface. But I'm not sure how to bring other people into it yet, so. That may prove interesting. I know most people use uh, StreamYards. I'm going to use thicker lines for this. But his crotch needs to get a lot of attention right now. Like I said, I'm a crotch guy. Sometimes that's all people look at. That's definitely the focal point of this piece. The crotch is extremely important uh, to some people. Some people don't think about it until they scratch it, which they should do in private, but rarely do. And yeah, I can't wait to do the next Patreon update for you guys. Because I will actually have some things to show. But I'll always do them on a Sunday, and then right after I should, should uh, I should just go straight into doing some sort of drawing thing and chatting. But I'd like to hit you guys at all times, so that different time slots for different time zones work. I am going loco. I am. I was never sane. I was never sane. I, uh, it's a constant battle with coherence uh, and avoiding doing things that may get me arrested or get my wife arrested. I'm not allowed to be cheeky too much because uh, she is a shield maiden and she will she will defend me at all costs if anyone gets annoyed. So he got his main body bit down. But, so I mean, the light's going to be coming from up here. So you want to keep a thin line weight on anything on the top, looking down. And then I can flesh out and go thicker on things that are facing downwards. If that makes any sense to anyone. I'm not used to explaining my art or my mental process, which is incoherent at best. But he's sitting in some sort of fancy chair. I mean, you guys tell me if you just want me to shut up and you just want to watch. But I'm happy to chat. I mean, if I, I don't want to forget you guys are there, because then I'll, you know, then I will like scratch my crotch or something or pick my nose. Which uh, may be a thrill for some, but um, I probably don't really want to do that. So he's got his cigarette. I thought about putting his cat in, but I suck at cats, and and this this picture's already got enough of a focal point that I didn't want to put too many other competing things around. And with the way I hope I can paint it, um, it's going to work pretty well without without too much extra going on. Sometimes less is more, and sometimes more is more. But I don't want to crowd this this piece. The focus is definitely on him, and hopefully the way I draw him, which will be passable. I hate chairs, by the way. So, but this is a big commission, so uh, I draw chairs for big commissions. I also hate horses, 
some of the worst things you can get people to ask them to draw are horses, bicycles, cars, chairs, any backgrounds. Um, some people find them fun, I guess, but uh, that's not many artists. Yeah, I got cat hair on my uh, on my sleeve. One of my cats is asleep on the desk over there. Which obviously makes no sense on camera, but over there. There. I'm not going to show because uh, she's quiet right now. Which means I don't have to get up and let her out. But I let her in. Because if I didn't, she would want to come in at a really annoying time anyway. I'm not anti-dog, I'm just pro-cat. I like cats. I like dogs too. That's all going to be dark in there. I'm really only trying to capture the shape of this chair. And this line here needs to be thin. So speaking of the 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 best artist that draws spider, uh, Derek Robinson. Uh, Robertson. Uh, I just finished the last episode of the boys of the current series of the one that's up, and I liked it, but I'm a bit annoyed that they're only doing it every Friday now, because I want it all now. How dare they? I think it's a good show. I'm so sorry, Xavier. Welcome to your brain. Welcome to my brain. I think our brains are the same. Yeah, what have chairs ever done for us? JH? Nothing. I always thought if I'm rich... Uh, any chance for a vampire at at... You mean like the Star Wars, literally the Star Wars uh, Empire vehicle, but a vampire? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure how I would approach that. I would need to see an example. But yeah, the boys has been pretty good so far. I just need more. But uh. If you didn't know, a guy named Derek Robertson drew Trans Transmet, also drew the boys. And uh, keep seeing pictures of him having a great time, or had to have it when he was there, because he's not there now. Had a great time on set. Which is really nice when creators get to go to the TV shows and the movies of the stuff that they created. I got to go to 30 Days a Night twice. Paid my own way. But they invited me back the first time because they liked me. It was really cool to see uh, how things are created. It's cool, but then you, you look at stuff and you go, yeah, I can imagine the behind the scenes. So it sort of loses a bit of... A bit of the... Not the aura, but the... Being sucked into the world of it. And just enjoying it for what it is. But the boys, I, I definitely did. And I cannot wait for more uh, Raised by Wolves. If you, guys, if you guys haven't checked out Ra Raised by Wolves yet, the new Ridley, Ridley Scott, he's an executive producer, and I think he directed the first the first one. Uh, that's, it looks to be a very interesting new TV series, science fiction. So i got that to look forward to, because that's still only a, a weekly thing. And there's the Dune trailer for the movie that should be hitting very shortly. I'm hoping not to be disappointed by that because I'm really looking forward to Dune and The Expanse when it comes back and the final half season of Vikings because I liked Vikings it wasn't real history they kind of combined way too much but they did what they could it was a good show because when I work if I'm not talking to you I'm always 
watching things. I always like to have uh, noise on. But things that like keep my interest, so they keep me alert. So I'm always like glancing at the screen. Because if I put on a podcast or something, I will zone out completely and get tired and not even hear what they were saying anyway. So it's kind of useless. They don't get my attention very much, which is sad. I hate shoes. Well, feet. Getting an artist to draw feet, you should appreciate that. Because uh, a lot of the time we try to avoid such, such dirty things. I think I've done the, all I want to do in the little limelight, but I've probably lost my cap now. Yeah, it's always a good idea to remember where you put your cap, your uh, pen cap. This one's nearly dead anyway. There it is. But I would like it to last a couple, a couple hours longer. Um, I'm going to go chunky next. I'm gonna go chunky for two reasons. One, I like chunky. Two, uh, I can put in the folds of his thing a little more and then I'm gonna add a lot of shading onto that. So there's a lot of thought goes into how you approach each, each drawing and painting. I mean, if I wanted to cheat, I would just color this all in black, but that, that wouldn't be fair. I could, I could put some lines in white on it, but that wouldn't feel right. So the more lines you put on something, the more people think you put effort in. Which is actually usually true, but sometimes you don't need lines. Really good artists can do things in... They would do things in one line if they could get away with it and make it look amazing. I am not one of those artists. I'm too insecure and not talented, but I appreciate you guys. JH, you picked up the post Frank Dune books and so far I'm unimpressed. Heretics of Dune just doesn't feel like it has the depth of the older books. See, I've read some of the newer ones, uh, written by his son and Kevin J. Anderson. I actually did a cover for Kevin J. Anderson. I've met him a couple times. Um, when he tried to do a comic, uh, it was called Stalag X or something. It was like a space prison thing many, many years ago. I read the one with the, with the, the two machine guys trying to catch the no ship. I didn't mind it, but it wasn't really Dune. It was not the bit of Dune that we all know and love. It was all about the, the gol gollas, gollas. What was lies? I need to read the original books. I've never read the original books. I apologize. I've only played. So I got into Dune because of the games. There was, I literally played the original Dune after I'd played Dune 2 or 2000. I went back, I played it all. And I really liked the movie it was a trip it felt different and alien it still does compared to star wars and everything like that and you know the space navigators yeah i was down with that it's like okay you're weird creatures and uh the harkonnens and whatnot the june oh that's another cat Dune just has a nice complexity to it that Star Wars doesn't seem to have when it comes to moral ambiguity. Who's actually a good guy? Who's kind of a bad guy? Who brings about the end of the universe or the, the Empire? And if, if my other cat meows again, I'm going to let, let Boris in. My art is made with love and with cats. Sometimes both, never, never, need, never neither. 
So he gets a bit of chunky shadow crap going on on his boot. These are mostly going to be blacked out, but for texturing purposes, I'm going to add some stuff that you'll still see showing through when I, when I come to the paint. I wish my work area was slightly bigger. You may have noticed I don't do it on a, a slanted page like that. Screw that. I've never, never done that. I put my chair down low. But uh, I've never gotten used to working like this up here. It just it feels wrong to me. It feels like I can't get straight lines properly or things like that. All right, a couple of thick lines here. Then I can get onto the the meat. Meat of the matter. I'm going to have two playlists on my YouTube channel. One will be the meat, well, one will be the fat, and one will be the meat. And the meat will have all this stuff. And the fat will be the Patreon updates and other weird little things and stuff. Um, and I'm still new to all this, so hey. We'll see how it goes. So this pen is slightly thicker line weight. You can buy these at any office store, pretty much. And just kind of bland, uh, kind of ballpoint tip, uh, uniball vision. They are nothing fancy, honestly, but they're permanent black ink. And they really work for when I'm watercolor or painting with other like acrylics and stuff. When I started out, I used crow quills. Uh, and really like them. You can get a lot of good effects with crow quills but they also take a lot longer to constantly dip and get a line properly and they break a lot so I'll be very happy when I'm done with this damn chair it's my fault I decided on it I also don't use rulers when I probably should and my work has an organic feel. Sue me. Yes, the David Lynch Dune film, not bad. I liked it a lot. I mean, it's the best Dune film out there because it's the only one. Although the, the, the Sci-Fi Channel miniseries were, were okay, considering the effect budget that they had at the time and when they were made. Uh, but I have high hopes for the Dune film. And the cast is pretty good too. So I, I, I actually have my hopes up, which never works usually in, when you're thinking of Hollywood movies. That would be a mistake. Uh, but we'll see. So I'm adding a little bit of line weight on his fingers underneath where any light hits this way. Remember, I am nowhere near a good artist, but uh, this is what you get. I appreciate you all. Yeah, the cast is pretty good. Jason Momoa. Uh, who's Leto? Uh, He's a guy I really like. Damn it, I'm blanking on his name. But the Chalamet, Chalamet uh, guy for Paul Atreides, is, uh, he's a really good actor. He was in that Netflix uh, Shakespeare adaption of two of Henry the Fifth and Six, I guess it was. Uh, he was really good in that. He's got a weird way of being. Which... As soon as I saw him, like, yep, yeah, that guy could be Paul Atreides. Kind of like when Tom Hardy was cast as uh, Mad Max. I'm like, yeah, okay. I saw Bronson and thought, yeah, okay, you can be Mad Max now. That guy worked. Uh, a bit of shadowing on the goddamn shoelaces. 
shoelaces. Oscar Isaacs. Yeah, he's Leto. Oh, I was thinking. I was also thinking of the original guy who played Leto. He's a good actor. I liked him in a lot of stuff. William Hurt. That was that was his name, I think. Not John Hurt. He yeah, Oscar Isaacs is good. In Ex Machina. He's been in a lot of stuff lately. I'll forget about Star Wars for him. We won't count that. But he's been in a lot of like thoughtful movies. I think he was in an I think he was in a, he was in Annihilation as well. He's been in a lot of interesting sci-fi stuff. Maybe he likes it, maybe he's just been typecast and goes with what he gets, but I think he's had good, decent taste in films he's been in. Have a nice day, hell dude. Xavier. I love Fury Road too. I got really lucky uh, before Fury Road was out. I got asked. I can die happy for several reasons. One is I got to do a June. I got to do a June cover for one of the prequel comics coming out. So I, I touched June on its release, um, which I think I've put up for you guys. If I haven't, it's going to come soon because only for you guys. Um, you get to see my process work a little. But uh, I got asked to do. They would DC were doing an art book for for um, Fury Road, so I got to do a double page spread uh, Mad Max image for the new film. But there had been almost nothing released at that point of Mad Max of Fury Road uh, out, so we all got sent a CD or a DVD along with some reference stuff, just of stuff. Which you, when you don't have context for what the fuck stuff is, it's like, okay, well, I could draw that. Don't know what it is, but, um, but the CD came, the DVD came with um, George Miller giving me a 15 minute rundown of the whole world and explaining just to people doing this art project what he was wanting, or what, what he was thinking of, of the world and like trying to set the scene for us. So I can die happy because I got to, I got a sneak peek from George Miller's mind on. On what he was doing for uh, Fury Road. Which made me very happy. And yeah, why am I adding a line right there? Yeah. Means I've got to do it on this side too. Symmetry sucks. Should have had him crossing his legs or something. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to block in his tattoos. They're going to be an annoying little thing to do. But they're going to be full black, so... To stand out against his pasty-ass skin. So they won't be painted, they'll be inked. I think he says yes. JH says, I think he says yes to anything by Alex Garland, which, yeah, he's an amazing writer. Yeah, I would say yes to anything by him as well. Man, he did, uh, he did Judge Dredd, I think. Which there needs to be more of. I got stuck in Toronto with, um... Why am I blanking on names? He's in The Boys, he's Butcher. Um, New Zealand guy should be Wolverine the guy who was Judge Dredd <laughs> we, we missed our flight from a con because he was at the con as well so we all had to overnight at a hotel in Toronto to get the flight that well he had to get a different flight but we were coming from the same middle of nowhere in um Canada. But he, he was a lot of fun. The flight attendants really liked him. He was very charming. And I was too afraid to say hi.
because I actually like his work. So, plus he's a big dude. He exudes masculinity. In a way, few rarely do. And I've seen him be angry far too much uh, in his acting to want to uh, piss him off by approaching him if he wants to be alone. That's the thing Australians do that Americans don't do culturally a lot more, is if we see a celebrity, and this is not a rule, it's just a probability thing, we just leave them alone. We don't fuck with them. If they're in their office private time out in the world, leave them alone. Yes, they know you know who they are, but they probably just want to walk their dog or go shopping. But, you know, a lot of people like having a photo with a celebrity, even if they were just sat down to eat their meal or something, or having a private moment. But uh, I think they get a right to some time off too. I'll give them a head nod, but that's about it. I will let them be. So I've been, met enough celebrities, and generally they're all nice people. They're just really interesting, uh, friendly people. Which you should be if you're, you know, famous in such a way that you're pretty damn lucky to, to be doing what you're doing. Getting paid a lot of money. There's not too many arseholes, well there's no arseholes I've met. I don't have any horror stories. The only one who I think I've ever vaguely met and my wife has met who is definitely uh, not someone who's nice would be Gene Simmons, but he's he's known to be an asshole. It's not like I'm talking shit or anything. He's kind of a dick, generally. Watching two minutes of his old TV show was enough to prove that. Have any of you met celebrities? Or, you know, celebrity or someone. Doesn't matter who they are. Carl Urban, yeah, that was, was Carl Urban. He's very nice. He had a big full beard. Uh, no, it wasn't full. It was kind of the butcher look before it was the butcher. Uh, before it was butcher. Um, I thought it was just his relaxation beard. Life in comics is pretty weird when you get weird circumstances because it's it's we're still entertainment media type thing and a lot of actors get into um, you know production companies they do their own thing they want to option other things so you get you get interesting emails sometimes from people that represent people and stuff like that and occasionally meet them so even if things never happen. It is not what I signed up for. I feel pretty awkward with that stuff, but... I just wanted to draw and stay at home and be assaulted by my cats. Who just turned my printer on. Did you really turn my print? Thank you. My printer is down there. My cat just decided to walk onto, onto it. So when the printer turns on, the lights flicker for a second. This probably means I'm going to be electrocuted at some point. Maybe it'll happen on one of these, and uh, I'll be famous for a very different reason of what I'd want. But yeah, man, I can't wait for June. You saw Matthew Hastings high. You saw Peter Dinklage and his family walking in New York. Did you go up and say hi and ask for a photo? The man is walking his dog with his family. I'm sure he would have appreciated that. See, I in in that situation was, it's just a thrill to see him and then go, and then walk away. I'm not going to bother a guy like that. 
you probably got an awful lot of that sometimes. Well, then maybe people in New York in New York don't give a fuck about that. That's a very New York way to be. I lived there for two years, and uh, you'd see some very interesting people in the streets. I forgot to draw his nipples. Nipples are very almost as important as a crotch. Nipples, nipples, and belly buttons. I really get to put too much emphasis on erogenous zones and I do class the belly button as an erogenous zone if you put your finger in it it's weird do not no you cannot open that door Oik. yes you're very cute but you're not opening that door sometimes she like when she wants to be a pest she op tries to open the door to the bathroom and that will not go well for anyone I have not met Peter Dinklage, but, uh, hello, Andrea. Oh, Neil Finn. Oh, where have I got to scroll up for this one? I know who Neil, Neil Finn is. Uh, she had a plane with Peter Fonda. That's awesome. That's awesome, Jody. And saw Neil Finn. Um, who have I seen? Eddie Vedder lives next, not next door, in the neighborhood. So I'm pretty sure he walked by me at a, at the music store a few months ago. Um, that guy would have loved to say, hey, love your music. He's in a music store. He's going to expect that in a music store. But um, I had Alfie Allen, the guy who plays Theon for Game of Thrones. Not Peter Dinklage, but uh, he actually, he was at a con uh, and a guy got a commission off me of Theon. He then went and stood in line and got his the picture of the painting of Theon signed by him. And I'm not bragging. He liked it enough. That he said, where did you get this? And he made him bring him over uh, to my booth. And he was awesome. He, he wanted to meet me and shake my hand and say it was awesome. And I gave him as much free shit as he wanted. He insisted on paying. That he was a really nice uh, guy. That, that guy didn't have to take his, the time out to do any of that. Probably gets drawn a few times. But it seemed like he genuinely enjoyed um, the aspects of stuff. It was really nice. He was my f so, and thus he was my favourite for several reasons, not least of, of, for the Kraken. Eh, it doesn't matter if I fuck this bit up because I'm gonna black this stuff in. Black it in or out? Black it in out it means the same thing. Black it out. Weird alien eyes on his chest. But yeah, if you do enough cons, you. you end up meeting or having some weird uh, interactions with some of the celebrity guests because sometimes they mix you up with celebrity guests or sometimes if you do an Australian con because it's Australia and it's awesome um, the comic artist kind of guys get treated um, and girls um, as if the same as the celebrities and when I mean that it's like you will go on the same bus to the convention center in the morning and then you uh, take the bus back at night so you get a chance to mingle a little bit and just uh, be real uh, farewell Andrea thank you for even popping in I know it's very early in France uh, I will see you later uh, when it's uploaded uh, no I didn't just let them go by he definitely knew he was looking at you, which was awkward enough. They're going to get that, but I'd figure they'd mostly be numb to people just knowing who they are walking by. But it's when you just stop them mid-sentence of whatever they're doing and demanding a photo with them that I... That's that, that's something I'd stick up for them for. It's like, let, let them have a little life with their family out, out for a walk. I'd want that. I've been recognized in public twice in my life and it was extremely awkward for like two seconds because you're just walking around and you don't know these people but they know who you are. It's kind of unsettling. But only unsettling because you don't know who they are. But then they they explain they know who you are and they're like fans, they like you or your work. And it's a very nice experience. 
But I can only imagine if you were known for who you are and you you have a not nice experience because people don't like you. That would be horrible. I would never leave my house. Like if you're uh, Roger, if you're someone likely to have go to a restaurant and have half the staff there want to spit in your food, I would not be going out to get food, and I'd be ordering under a different name. That's got to suck. But if you're at that point, you probably did something to deserve it. So that's not fa I guess that's fame, but that's notoriety, not fame or infamy. Nearly done with his tattoos. And does it count that I know Charlie Stross or Stross via his wife? I don't know who, who Charlie is. I haven't been in Australia for uh, over 10 years. That's a long time to miss who the hell is famous now or known for things. Off Aussie TV. I try to watch some Aussie TV. <clears throat> But I have no idea who the personalities are anymore, if I'm missing some actors. I do watch Wentworth. I still like Wentworth. Wentworth is a female prison uh, drama in Australia. It's on Netflix, most of it, I recommend. Well, Netflix America, at least. Is there a comic scene in Australia that is not known uh, to the US? Kind of like how manga took a while to be known in the US. Uh... I was very not in the comic scene in Australia because I was from the Alaska of Australia in Perth, which was, a, I mean, it may be different now, but it was its own separate country kind of thing for a while because it's a five hour plane ride to the rest of the country. The rest of the country kind of doesn't really think of us much, except when we win grand finals. Um, I had my own little crew in Australia, not my crew, group of people. Uh, who were into comics. They were like my first real friends outside of high school, really, uh, because we, we all met at a little comic exhibition. And there's a couple of guys that have dabbled in American comics. He's a Scottish-based writer of the Laundry Flies series of books. Laundry Flies or Lord of the Flies? <laughs> I don't know if that's a typo, but Laundry Flies sounds also very interesting. Uh, I've heard of the Lord of the Flies but that guy would be pretty old if it was Lord of the Flies so it might not be um, yeah Aussie comics I would think of Australia as simply in a bleak outlook um, like a medium sized US state version of a, of a comic community we're big enough that we have uh, at least one store in most major cities and you know enough readership for like a, well, we have enough readership for, I was going to say a bunch of cons, but the cons exist for various people as well. You know, we have a, we have a healthy scene. There's a lot of comic uh, creators from Australia uh, working in the American global industry now. I'll call it the American industry because it's very, the Anglo industry, because we're still a very niche industry compared to manga, uh, French comics. And apparently young adult graphic novel comics, which sell more than the superhero stuff now. Which is great, but also not great if you don't do them. As long as everything else is healthy. And that's a longer discussion that a lot of people are having a debate over. So I want comics to be successful, any comics. But I'd like the comics I do <laughs> to also have a market. Um... And I don't just mean you guys, I mean, hopefully this will, stuff I do will be in bookstores at some point and that there'll be a market for that, that they can even get into bookstores at some point through a regular publisher. Um, or like how the European comics aren't well known in the US. Uh, we have a very small local scene. Uh, I really got into comics because there was a comic called Dark Horse Down Under. The Dark Horse, um, it was a weird... I don't know how that happened, but they published a couple of Aussie guys in their own comic. Uh, I think that made it to America, but I read the Australian version of these two Aussie guys. One of them uh, was Ashley Wood before he was published in America with uh, like Marvel stuff, with his earliest Marvel stuff. And he's still one of my favorite artists. 
And that's before I even knew he was Australian or from my own hometown. But uh, that was more like an accident rather than a thing. We have we have had local comics, but it's like you can you put them in a few comic stores, but that's like, uh, you know, the, the comic scene in Missouri. And however many comic stores are in Missouri, well, they're the comic stores you can beg them to put your comic in because there's no real fancy distribution model or anything. Well, it wasn't in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, no, we're pretty much very American. We're very American and very British in our uh, media in Australia. If it's not homegrown, it's culturally British and culturally American. It used to be more culturally British. I grew up with British stuff, but it's much more American now, I think. No, I haven't been back for a while. But I'm sure it's only getting more American. Not saying it's a bad thing. But I grew up with some crap on TV. I grew up with the Benny Hill Show, if you've ever heard of that. I don't think they would ever be showing that on TV anymore. Uh, I grew up with repeats of MASH. MASH and I Love Lucy. Which uh, probably wouldn't be aired again now with certain aspects of them having aged a little bit too much, maybe. But I mean, they were classics at the time, but I was a young kid and they were kind of boring to me. I wanted cartoons. But I, I, where I lived, it sucked because I had to catch the school bus very early in the morning. So I would not be able to watch the cartoons. I got to watch like one early one and then I'd have to go to school and sit on the sit on a bus for an hour. Thanks, Mum and Dad. Thank you for that life experience. All right, now I get to uh, I have done some work. I'm gonna fill in his tattoos, get that bit out of the way. I'm only gonna be inking this guy tonight. Because colouring him is going to be a whole nother... Um, colouring him is going to take longer. Painting him is going to take longer. And I want to put some effort into this. So I'll break this this piece of art up into two. Which also means... Rendering a final thing later on won't take 17 hours, hopefully. How long have I been streaming? It doesn't... It used to give me a freaking... Of how long I've been recording... Oh, there you go. One hour, seven minutes. But when I upload this for real, I'll probably take off the North Korean music and put something else. I'll probably redo the the little intro bit, make it a bit shorter. I just like it. I was having fun. I can put stupid subtitles over public domain weird stuff. Plus, I like pissing off North Korea. And stealing their propaganda images. Shintaro. Shintaro. I know that from somewhere. But I'm getting tired, so... My brain is mush. I should have had a Red Bull, but I'd like to go to bed before 3 a.m. I am a vaguely normal person, but I'm not a morning person. But I do try to go to bed before 3 a.m. It's very hard to go to sleep lately in Seattle because we're in the middle of record heat. So I wanted to do it tonight because the next two days are going to be hell. And no one has air conditioning here, so it makes it tough to sleep when it's hot. I know, poor me. I miss air conditioning. But you only need it for like six weeks usually up here.
I hope it has been nice and cool where you guys are. Or at, at least not heat waves in Europe. And I hope it's been a decent winter in Australia. So I'm just thickening in and colouring in the small bits of the black. I'll leave the big bits for the the much more the much larger nib. I like a big nib. I like big nib action. Everyone should. big nib action sometimes I make everything sexual I, so I'm, I apologize you also see my head bend down a lot I know it's like I am not going bald I just have a shitty hairline not cheap no bald top of my head gets more exposure on this thing than anything else I apologize I mean, do you really need me in this, in this, uh, in the corner? Do you like seeing me while I do this? I'll probably put a poll up for that. Black and white Japanese ninja series. They got dubbed into English and were shown a little kids. I've never heard of that, but I am from Perth. The one I grew up with was Monkey, or Monkey Magic, which was the Japanese uh, story of the Chinese. Uh, story of Journey to the West. Unless it was a South Korean production, I forget. If you ever want to look up something awesome, I, I tweeted it the other day, but it's called um, Mon The Monkey TV Show from the late 70s. Uh, the opening credits scene to that is on YouTube and it is amazing. It's all like Power Rangers before Power Rangers. Lots of uh, fighting and jumping and demons and strange monsters and monkey gods oh I wish I was in Denver Matt you lucky bugger it's serious I saw a uh, I saw a weather thing that said it was where it wasn't snowing everything was on fire in Colorado uh, I like Denver why the hell was it snowing in Denver? Is it just because it's that time? Because that's where I need to be then. I really like Denver. Then I had a great con. I was meant to go last year, apparently, but I had another con. But they, uh, I put in for a table at the Denver con and uh, never got back to them after that because I just expressed interest, didn't pay. But they gave me one and uh, didn't tell me that I definitely had one and... I was somewhere else doing another con. Um, so yeah, I should have turned up. I hope I can get in again. Yeah, I like Denver. Everyone had tattoos when I was in Denver. But artsy, artsy ones, it had culture. And I like snow, so. Sounds like Denver is a cool place to escape to, like now, this time of year. Because if it's snowing, it's not going to be balls hot, I hope. Yeah. So I know it gets hot in Denver too in summer. I mean, it's not... You are not in the Arctic, but you are high up. But I would live in Denver, but uh, my wife, she likes the ocean too much. But I think Denver's pretty with the mountains. So is Seattle. Uh, we do live next to a, volca a volcano, though, so. I think I've done all the main inking. You can see it a lot more on camera now. Because this is on grey paper. How do I show you white paper? This is a this is lightning for a page of wormwood, so ignore that. But uh, that's white and that's grey. So it's not just the camera being shitty. But now I need to add uh, a lot of dark, sort of darkening up this bit. And then it will almost be, almost be ready to start layering tones on it of paint. Which I will do on the next stream. This is a big commission. This is one of the biggest I've got. 
biggest in a sense of it's a large commission. This is a 11 by 17, but also in subject matter that I want to do a really good job on. I try to do a good job on them all. It's just that this one has me very enthused. If you ever commission an artist, um, it's really nice when you give them options uh, and try to work with them to their strengths, maybe, of what they know they can draw, what you've seen in the past that they draw that you liked. Because that way you get the best work from them, ideally. Like, I'm a horror guy. I, I have drawn Captain America and Superman, but, uh, I mean, it's different. I've drawn some animated characters. I forget their names. I've drawn minions. I've never seen the film, but I know what minions are. Not really me, but I still drew them. Because if it makes if it makes a person happy, who am I to argue with? I'm there to make you happy. Or ideally not piss you off, which uh, sometimes is hard hard to do. Hard not to do in the past. But yeah, this was a, this is, this is a commission I'm very happy with. Yeah, man, you got, you got, Sept you got September snow in Denver and we have record heat in, in uh, Seattle. The average temperature should be 73 degrees in September here. It's going to be 92 or three on Thursday. That's not good. It's not good because I want to work. And it's not good because it means I have to have my window open to cool things off. And then I get to hear the neighbours. And I don't want to listen to the neighbours. Because they tend to have their windows open too while they're playing games very loudly. And I'm not 16, like he is. So I'm probably going to say a few different things when I play a game compared to a 16 year old. But he gets very angry. Very angry. Oh man, I miss snow. I want some snow. I mean, I'm lucky I can look out and see snow, but I, I can't touch it. If there's no snow on the volcano, then uh, we're in trouble. Well, there's actually a glacier on the volcano, I think. And if that goes, there's a lot of trouble. Mount Rainier. So I'm adding a lot of hatching, and I'm trying to sort of shape it with the folds a bit. It's really just for, for texture. I'm gonna I'll work back in it with white later as well. So it's really just to add interest and let you know things are there. It beats being flat black, which is nice, but you want that for the tattoos, not for anything else. So he his black pants and black shoes are gonna be gradations of grey and black. I'm really surprised how many of you guys showed up tonight. Thank you. I know I'm hitting different people on different time zones at different times. This is just for you guys. I'll probably start doing public ones at some point, but for now, you guys on YouTube only get to see pre-recorded things. I'm speaking to you people in the future, as opposed to the people here now who are special from Patreon. If you want to be special, I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash templesmith. Um, you can see a lot more there. I post a lot of my stuff there. Much more than on regular social media, really. Mostly because I do it when, I, when, I, when I've literally done the thing 
and then by the time I, I'm normally allowed to show things publicly or it's relevant, I've long forgotten where it is. Like, it's not just there to show. So I probably miss posting a lot of things publicly. Because <laughs> I know I have a, an Angel and Spike cover uh, just went public. So I've got to play a lot of, uh, I've got to show that uh, tomorrow, I guess. I drew uh, Spike. Because you guys have seen the first Angel cover I did, which was just Angel. This one's just Spike. Red Wolf says, unfortunately, they're scaling back in favor of playing with what we think is a grenade launcher. Not as wimpy, I'm going to say wompy, but wimpy, as the shelling. Oh, my neighbor's in our, an army base, and today was Shelly. Well, that sucks uh, in one way, but that's also cool in another way. Uh, we live with fireworks here. There were some really big fireworks last night that sounded like shells. That scared our pets. Uh, I used to live next, not next door, but very local to the SAS barracks in, in Perth. Uh, that was fun. My grandparents lived around the corner from them, and we lived much further out. But one night at about 4 a.m., we got, must have been at least three Black Hawk helicopters flying just above the tree line over our house uh, with no lights on, doing a training exercise. That was fun. We thought we were all going to die. Because <laughs> one, you don't fuck with the SAS. And two, anyone who's heard a helicopter up close, when it's literally skimming the roof of your house with no lights on, and you've woken up from a dead sleep. I think I know what Osama Bin Laden felt like. I'm probably going to get flagged now because I said his name or something. But I would not want to be on the wrong end of those guys. Or of that sort of operation. Yeah, they shouldn't be doing like live fire training things near residential areas. That sounds crazy. I do like the army though. I prefer army to the navy and air force. Just cuz they get they get big good toys. I like tanks. And I'm not a fan of the new uh, jet fighter that the air force is getting. I don't really think the F35 is going to be that great. From what I've read but it's going to cost a lot of money. And don't get me started on submarines in Australia. What a shit show. There's a lot of politics there and about money. So I filled in his feet, his pants. Do I want to do his shoes or should I... I'm going to do his, a little bit of his shoes. But, I mean, the rest are going to be black anyway, but it's about the texture, so... I want them to look like black shoes, not weird half black shoes. So, that yeah, one's well, a bit larger, but anyway. You're not really going to notice the details once I put the paint on it, so... There's going to be shadow down here anyway. And... The back of the chair needs to be... I really like this texturing thing. I guess I am like influenced by Topi a bit. I mean, there's other artists that do it a lot, a lot better than, of, than me at this. Like uh, Ashley Wood. They really shape things with their hatching or whatever you want to call it. Army base was there first. Yeah, that's fair. I don't like it when like new housing uh, complexes go up in hip hip areas uh, that are only hip because of things like live music or things that people don't generally want to live next to, but do want to go to, and then they complain about the noise. And then suddenly the suburb becomes very boring. Uh, and all the prices are very high. 
but the live music scenes are dead stuff like that not going to mess with an army base though that definitely was uh it's like they're doing something real that i mean cities expand when i lived in san diego uh at one point you could see in the harbor i think it was four aircraft carriers at one time i could see in my view and at that point i realized that, I was looking at enough firepower that would completely destroy my country. There was enough planes on that to defeat the Australian Air Force, I'm pretty sure, if they wanted to. But having them in civilian areas eh, it makes them a target, so it's probably good to keep them away a little bit further out. They play the game of the Blackhawks too, yeah, yeah. It's a great game. I never want to experience it again. Well, it's fun to think about. But I think uh, I'd, I'd go mental if I had to live with that all the time. That would be crazy. Uh, one of my teachers in, in uh, high school was very keen to tell me her son was a pilot for one of the Blackhawks too. So she was very proud. But I didn't really appreciate back then that how... Uh, how good the SAS were at doing their jobs. Because when shit goes down in the world, the Americans ask for two, two groups. They ask for the British SAS and the Australian SAS. Because apparently we're pretty good, or were pretty good. I'd say hopefully we still are. But in Perth in the 80s, we had a, uh, I remember because it happened when I was a kid, we had a retired SAS guy who decided to uh, not acclimatize to civilian life terribly well, and he became a bank robber. And because he's ex-SAS, cops didn't catch him for a long time, and I think it ended in some sort of high-speed chase and a shootout. I can't remember if he died or if he just got caught, but that was a big thing when you're like 10 to hear about. Uh, a little more texturing. This is going to be texturing here. Because the chair's not that important, it's just the shape. It's always good to have land to blow up. Right, I'm gonna... I believe this is called feathering. For me, it's just tapering what I've been doing elsewhere up. Because I'm gonna add shadow to where his arm is and stuff anyway, but I don't wanna hatch in the entire arm of the chair. Just hinted at shape a bit more too. Feathering. Well, I could do it to the back, but the back's a different, um, a different thing. I could put a another button on it there. I don't know what you call these buttons on the back of these chairs, sort of thing, but it's kind of like old school. It's very, I like those sort of things. Mm, that's going to be painted. That'll be painted. And, mm, I think he's almost done. You know what I will do is bit of the shoelace and then I'm going to call it a night because it's nearly been one and a half hours. So I do that and then I'm ready to start the painting tomorrow. Which I'll do a little earlier if I can. Um, but I'll send a message out. Or should I really plan them in advance? I don't know. Maybe I'll give you guys like a, uh, a whole day's warning. But I can't send a link until I make it go live. But at least you can know that it's coming. It would be much easier if I just made them for the public. But, but not yet. Not yet. You guys are special. So only you guys get access. This is an unlisted stream, so any people with the link can uh, get in on this right now. If you can hear a weird noise, that's just my computer 
nudging the back of the wall while I ink. I don't know how do you guys think this is going. Have I completely botched it? I'm putting the opposite side, uh, opposite directional hatching for the line in the boot. For no apparent reason, then I thought it might be might work out. Yeah, it kind of has, kind of. Oh, I know what it could do. A little bit of texture on his knuckles or between the knuckles. A few extra. I know I'm left-handed, so you can't see what I'm doing, but trust me, there's there's little lines there, there, there. Just a little bit. This thing probably took me like two and a half hours to draw in the first place to really work out what I wanted to do. That takes a lot longer to get that stuff down than the framework rather than the, you know, adding the, the pencils is like laying the foundation for an entire house. And then this is the brickwork. So you know what's going on. When you're when you're adding the bricks you know the shape of the house so i know the shape of the commission so of the piece but he gets a bit of shading under his neck too because that's that's in shadow or will be and a little texturing because he's got tendons on the neck and stuff left handers you know yes we are not left-handed we okay we're not lefties we're correcties we are one of the last great uh maligned groups of people in the western world we're not thought of we're left out left-handed people are people too i use a mouse with my right hand because i've been forced to uh, i use scissors scissors can openers there's all sorts of things not designed for left-handed people we're left out man and we're ten, like 10 percent of the population is left-handed it's not right we need we deserve representation in uh congress and stuff we need a lobbyist to represent left-handed interests i think even the new at they made new atms around here and they're made for right-handed people the fuckers because the the num the keypad used to be in the middle and then you see the screen that's fine anyone can use that now they put the keypad on the right and I have to move over because I can use my left on that. And then when I do that, the screen has a glare. You can't actually, well, it, it's designed that way. So you can't see the screen when you put it. It's a security thing. Man, I don't want anyone else to see my screen who's behind me. I'm not right-handed. I'm left-handed. But they didn't think of me or you. It's not right. Yeah, it's time for the 10% to rule the 90%. That, that always goes well in history that never ends badly i think it would be one of the the less stupid things to have a revolution over it would have my support a little bit uh, here we go again i really like his mouth on this a little bit more texturing a little bit of nose line to the mouth under his chin little texture so he's got some stuff going on in the glasses but that's for paint that's not for ink and all of this stuff is going to get darkened up a lot and shaded so i like the way you think jh um, I think for now, do you really want me to, to watch me erase this? 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the uh, hint of the smoke that I've got going on for his cigarette. It's going to shake the camera a fair bit. But it's therapeutic to erase the pencil sometimes. I don't do that freaking blue pencil thing. I use grey and then I just erase what I've done. And then I will scan this so that you guys, you know, when I do the final thing, you can see the progress shot in general. And I'll show that publicly eventually too. But long after you guys have seen it. So that I can finally like fully promote the, the Kofi coffee page. Kofi.com slash Ben Templesmith, whatever the fuck you want to call it where uh, I can do fun interactions with commissions I would like to always do this because it's kind of like I mean it's a, it's a it's a con replacement in a way in that I just sit around and uh, draw and paint at a con and chat while I'm doing it so I like that I get to know the people as I do the art half the fun of cons. Now, I don't think we're going to have comic book conventions for at least, well, in America, at least until 2022. I do not think it will be safe to do them. I do not think there will be a decent vaccine or a decent lower risk, at least until then. And I don't know what's going to happen. It's not like the... 20 it's not like the spanish flu spanish flu where everyone eventually got it and a whole bunch of people died and then everyone else moved on because they'd had it and it just became a, a feature most of us are trying not to get this one including me that doesn't mean we're all going to go out and try and get it at some point so that the risk is less so i don't know what's going to happen it's going to suck i'm just putting that little moon bit on on his uh fingernails whatever the fuck you call that i don't even have mine right now i don't have them i'm told i have great great nails by my mother she was very jealous of my nails growing up i didn't have them long but like apparently they don't break easy so uh and I'm told I had great fingers for piano or some shit by some people, but like, I don't know. I just do art. I think he's he's pretty much done. He's done, ready for the next stage. So, here on the back. No, nope, sometimes I have a half finished drawing on the back of the one I didn't like first, so. This is Spider Jerusalem pre paint. Thank you very much. Uh, for watching hopefully you weren't completely bored shitless um, I will paint this sucker up either tomorrow or the next day possibly Friday but only because there's going to be a giant heat wave here and no one has air conditioning and I'm not going to be doing this naked I okay I'm open to monetary potential compensation for that but I'm probably not going to ever be doing that naked. Certainly not on YouTube, not publicly. But, um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on uh, when I can stream next for that, when it's a good time that I'm conscious. That's uh, a, a half-decent time for you guys. It'll either be mid-morning my time or mid-evening, like now. Like now or like the last one I did on Sunday. So I hope that's all good. I'm going to say thank you very much. Hail Squid. And uh, put it back on me. Hail Squid. Thank you. And I will catch you guys uh, later. Thanks again for sticking with the Patreon and the Squid Army. <laughs> I will shut up now. <laughs> <laughs>